Hello, hard day, and happy new year to you all. Welcome to Tinkation 2023. I want to especially thank God for the Ubon King Foundation and all those that are behind the foundation for keeping legacy alive. And I believe very strongly that all our participants and viewers for this year will tremendously experience a year like no other. When we look at um, our nation and our world today, one of the major challenges that we have is youth unemployment and underemployment. And it's very, very important for us to be able to see how we can ensure that every one of us uh, um, is better positioned for economic empowerment and sustainability. So I'm going to be sharing a few thoughts with you just to be able to steer up your mind and position you for this year 2023. Uh, the first thing you need to understand is that over 80 percent of the populace in our nation Nigeria today are below the age of 35 and the same thing is recorded on the continent so on the continent of Africa over 70 percent of people on the African continent are below the age of 35 so it therefore means that we are a nation of young people we are a continent of young people and for every one of us to be able to be the best version of ourselves and fulfill our possibilities we need to be empowered but the first thing i want to talk about is the need for us to be rightly educated rightly educated because i've come to realize that when it comes to the world of education there are three groups of people when it comes to education number one we have those that are uneducated now the uneducated ones are those that are not educated because of uh, the fact that they have not been able to go through a process of academic education go through the four walls of an institution to be able to understand things the way educated people do and for those people, they need to understand that there is a dimension of education that they still need to have in order for them to be able to come into a place of economic empowerment and sustainability. Well, the second set of people we have are those that are educated. And education is powerful. Uh, and these ones that are educated are called educated because they've gone through the four walls of an institution. That's good. That's okay. But that's not all that there is to be and that's not all that you need if you are going to be fully empowered for economic sustainability because you see when it comes to academic education there is a limit to what academic education can do academic education does four major things it helps you to read it helps you to write it helps you to do mathematics or arithmetics so you can do calculation and it gives you the ability to think analytically but have you come to realize that most of the people that are academically educated are still not economically empowered why because academic education does not translate to economic empowerment or else the professor of economics will be the richest man in the world all the dean of faculty of accounts and all the people that teach you economics on campus they will have become the one that will be able to help you to understand what it means to be wealthy but they are not why because Academic education does not translate to economic empowerment. Having a PhD in swimming technology does not make you a swimmer. There are people that have gone to school, they have BSc in business administration, yet they cannot run a barbing salon successfully, they can't run a restaurant successfully, they can't run a boutique successfully. Why? Because they understand the theory, but they don't understand the practicalities of, of being able to create wealth. But you see, there is a third dimension of people when it comes to education, and those are the ones that are miseducated miseducated so you are either educated uneducated or miseducated and the major challenge we have which is one of the major fuels of youth unemployment is what i call the miseducation of the populace or the miseducation of the masses a lot of people are miseducated so you can be educated yet miseducated because all you have is just a dimension of education and not the full dimension of education um, in my book the school of money which is called the bible of wealth creation it's a book that teaches you how to make manage and multiply your money and also serves as a blueprint for entrepreneurs so if you are listening to me right now anywhere in the world and you don't have a copy of that book you need to get a copy of the school of money it's the bible of wealth creation it's a blueprint for the rising and the raising and the releasing of a new breed of entrepreneurs you can get the book by going to www.olumideemmanuel.com 
dot org and then you can contact my office for that so well, in the book i spoke about the seven star education i spoke about redefining education because when we talk about miseducation when you are not given the full story it's called miseducation when you are made to believe that what you need is abc when there is efd that is miseducation so you need to understand that when we talk about miseducation, when you are made to believe that in order for you to become wealthy, you go to school, get good grades, get a job, and you become wealthy without being made to know that there are other options. That's miseducation. So a lot of people have been miseducated because if you are going to become successful and be fully empowered, there are five dimensions of education that you need to have. Five dimensions of education that you need to have. Number one, you need to have personal education. So if you are listening to me right now, you're a young man, you're a young woman, do you understand yourself? Do you know your strengths? Do you know what your weaknesses? Do you know your likes? Do you know your dislikes? Do you really have understanding of yourself? Because when it comes to self, there is the known self, there is the unknown self, there is the hidden self, there is the blind self. So there is a dimension of you that only other people see that you don't see. So number one, you need personal education. You need to spend time to understand yourself so that you will know who you are. You know your likes, your dislikes, you know your temperament. You understand all the different strengths and weaknesses that you have so that you can be able to properly manage yourself for effectiveness in today's marketplace. Number two, you need academic education. Now, I've spoken extensively about that, so I won't repeat that again. You need academic education. Now, you see, when it comes to wealth creation, academic education is not enough for wealth creation and economic empowerment, but it still has its place. Because at least to be able to count money, you need to know how to do mathematics <laughs> so that you will not be deceived, so that you know that 10 plus 10 equals to 20. You, you still need to be able to read so that you can be able to write sign your check and read things before you enter your code. So you still need a level of academic education. And that's very, very important. Number three here, you need what I call marketplace education. You see, whenever you see an advert that says uh, uh, vacancy, every vacancy is a cry for help. So when you see an advert that talks about the vacancy and they say we need somebody that has BSc in accounting. Now when they say they need someone that has BSc in accounting, that's academic education. And they now say with three years experience or three years uh, industry experience when you see those three years experience that is talking about marketplace education because it's not just enough for you to have academic education you have to understand how things operate in the marketplace you have to understand how things work so you see a lot of people they have the good grades they have the good certificate they understand themselves but because they don't understand the way the marketplace works, when they get into the marketplace they fail because they don't understand teamwork they don't understand the place of policy loyalty submission to authority they don't understand reporting they don't understand promptness to task they don't understand a lot of things so when they get into the marketplace they are like I I didn't know how to go through all this because they didn't have that third dimension of education. Number four, you need spiritual education. Listening and listening well. Everything you see in your world today is controlled by things that you do not see. Before I speak, I think. What I say is a result of what I have thought. My thinking is invisible. My words are audible to you to hear. Before you can see a house, there is a design. The design is put on paper as an architectural design. And then the architectural design is developed and turned into a building. So every building you see was once a design in the mind of people. So you need to understand that the spiritual controls the physical. The spiritual realm is the realm where events occur before they happen. So before anything happens in the natural or in the physical, it first of all has its occurrence in the realm of the spirit. So you need to understand spiritual education to know that everything in this world is controlled from the spirit realm. So if you are going to succeed in today's marketplace, you are either in the secret cult or you are in the secret place. There is no middle ground. So if you are going to succeed in today's marketplace, you are either in the secret cult or you are in the secret place. There is no middle ground. The problem with a lot of people is that they are not in the secret cult, they are not in the secret place. So when they take the roll call in the secret cult, you are absent. When they take the roll call in the secret place, you are absent. So you need to have spiritual education. But number five, you also need to have financial education. Now, financial education is the ability to understand money. 
is to know how to make manage and multiply money is to understand income and expenditure is to understand cash flow compound interest is to understand asset and liability is to understand everything about money because you see, when you don't understand money how can money gravitate towards you when you hear that someone is a money magnet, it's because they understand money. Because the more you learn, the more you earn. Your learning capacity determines your earning capacity. So if you want to become all that you need to be and to be fully economically empowered for sustainability, you need financial education. But you see, the amazing thing is that schools don't teach financial intelligence. Yes. So you can see a lot of people that have gone to school, yet they don't have financial intelligence because they did not go through financial education. So financial education does not come through the four walls of an institution. Financial education is a function of personal development. It's a function of personal development. It's you making up your mind that I want to understand this thing called money. I want to understand it. You see, I'm always amazed how a lot of people wake up very early in the morning. They go out there looking for money. They want to blow. They want to make money. But the same sort of people that wake up very early in the morning looking for money are not also willing to take time out to learn about money. Because you need to understand that what you learn is what determines what you earn. And that's why I appreciate every one of you that have joined us today. And I appreciate the Ubon King Foundation for putting this together so that you can learn and they can bring different speakers to help you to learn so that you can be equipped to be empowered for sustainability. You know why? You see, one of the things I've come to realize is that when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. And that's why sometimes I have, I have a, a lot of reservation for all these free, free, free things. Just making things free, free, free. Sometimes it can buffer because when people don't pay, they just feel that, oh, it's free knowledge, it's free information. So once you understand the holistic dimension to education and then you now become educated, then you'll be better positioned to go forth and begin to excel. So in beginning to wrap up, let me now begin to talk to you about the importance of what I call the learn to earn and potential development education. Now, Learn to earn. Listen and listen well. Thank God for academic education. Thank God for all the different kinds of education that we have spoken about. But you see, we live in a world now where you need to make sure that whatever you are learning is something that can equip you to earn. So I call it the learn to earn education strategy. Instead of you spending four years to go and study what you don't need. Because one thing you need to understand is that when you enter into school today, year one, by the time you graduate four years later, you are going to be graduating in a different world. So the world that existed when you entered year one will no more exist by the time you graduate in year four, year five. So you find that over 80% of what is taught in school is useless after graduation. So when you go to school, over 80% of what they teach, by the time you graduate, you don't need it. So you now find that, that you are stranded. That's why we have a lot of people that have gone to school. They have certificate, but they are not certified for marketplace dominance. They are not certified for real life. So you are BSc in business administration, or you are BSc in agric accounts, and you can't do farming. I had a young man that sent me um, an email um, a while ago when we had this bank consolidation that had to um, cause a lot of people to exit. And this guy was 31 years old, and he was calling me, emailing me, oh, sir, I need your help, I'm confused, I don't know what to do. What was the problem? He had been working in the banking sector for seven years. And he said that he got to the office and he has been let go. And I don't know what to do. All I have is two million. What am I going to do? All I have is two million. You know, I studied the Greek accounts and I'll be... Ah. So I started wondering, you studied the Greek accounts. You went into the banking sector. What does the Greek accounts? Go, what has it got to do with banking sector? That's the problem with the miseducation of the masses. When you finish a Greek account, you're supposed to go into farming or go into any aspect of the value chain of agriculture. But because he went to school to study academic education and he was miseducated to think that after school he should go and look for a job, he ended up in the bank. Now a 31-year-old man with 2 million naira with a degree in Greek accounts is confused. Can you see the real problem now? When there are farmers that don't even have 300,000, and they have a whole plot of land. With two million, it could have at least five acres of land. If they even need five, what are you talking? There are places today, at least me, I'm in the Southwest. In this Ogun states or Shun states uh, or your states, there are places where for one acre of land, all you need is 200,000. You can even get it less to lease. So you can get five acres of land for less than a million and begin to farm. He can go into all kinds of value chain. Of, he can go into processing. He can go into poultry. He can go into fishery. There's so much he can do. But because he went to school 
for academic education and he does not have financial intelligence because he's part of those that are educated but miseducated he has two million yet he's complaining some of you listen to me right now if they give you two million you go complain if you see two million now you know go no way to do with him but because he was in the bank counting other people's money because he when you are he has spent his time in what i call monolithic thinking he was busy counting other people's money for seven years without understanding how to be able to have his own and that became a problem so you need to understand that, that you need to begin to focus on what I call learn to earn. What are the differences? There are a lot of short courses. A lot of you can even do a lot now and be earning in dollars. You can be in Nigeria, stay local, and you are earning globally. Because learn to earn is what you need to begin to look into now. Number two, as I close, is you need to look into potential maximization level. What is your potential? What is your gift? What is your talent? Whatever gift you have, whatever talent you have, whatever potential you have, you need to now begin to look into how you can develop it so that you can deploy it for wealth. Fishes don't struggle to swim, birds don't struggle to fly. There is something on the inside of you. Everything that the spider needs to spin a web is inside the spider. Your gold is tied to your gifts. Your treasure is tied to your talent. Your profit is tied to your potential. So as you are listening to me right now, there is a gift inside you. That gift, that talent, that potential, this year, is the year for you to think. That's why we call it thinkation. For you to think, we are helping you to think and to be educated so that your mind will be educated to produce results this year because you need to rise and you need to shine. So you need to begin to look at those potentials that you have and begin to look into how can I develop it. So explore every opportunity to develop what you have so that you can now deploy it and be a part of those that will testify of transformation and productivity this year. One of the major things that will help you to be able to develop what you have is mentorship. I want you to say it wherever I say mentorship. Yes, yeah, say it again. Mentorship. You need to be mentored. I've seen a lot of people read books, go for seminars, go for all kinds of conferences, yet they are not succeeding. They are not successful. Why? Because every time they read, especially books that are written by foreigners, when they read all these books, they are not able to translate it into action. And when they hit a snag on the road, they are not able to know what to do because they are not well mentored. And I would like you to know that this year, 2023, you will arise, you will shine. You will be the best version of yourself. You will fulfill your possibilities and you will become a testimony and an answer to your world because money flows in exchange for value. And you will arise into a place of value. You will meet needs, you will answer questions, you will solve problems. And at the end of the, this year, you have a testimony to share. I look forward to seeing you at the top. Thank you once again for the Ubon King Foundation and everyone uh, behind this wonderful platform. I'm going to see you um, at the top. So if you meet me anywhere, remind me and let me know you were part of Think Asian 2023. Take care of yourself. Keep your dream alive. Bye for now. Understanding business and structure from the Bible. The minimum number of businesses I, Obon King, should have is four. Minimum.